We have a lot to share this morning. My heart is full of emotions and uh, I have to contain myself to be able to deliver my message. Because only seeing what happened just a few minutes when the apostle was standing here giving a strong recommendation about GB and his wife and the elders sustaining his hands and the, and the elders think about the last evening message and it all happened it's, it's so expressive, so tough, so heavy that itself is a message which can change completely your life. One thing is to grow up and accomplish. Another thing is to be able to give the button properly on time. If you are late, things went worse. That's why many of men of God finish bad. They are late to give the baron. Or they don't want to give battle, at least. They don't want to make room. As I told yesterday, uh, not a very young man. Um, even in our ministry, I'm 35 years ministers. Believe me, in 35 years, we've seen stuff. People up, down, very clever, sharp people, skilled people. Ten years later, they're just on trash. Sexual morality, divorcing, no future. You wonder how can you start great and finish bad? Lilo. How can you just be a great man today and a worse tomorrow? How can you be a great and be a mess tomorrow? Shame on us. Some principles must be kept properly if you want to finish well. And believe me, the end of stuff is better than the beginning. Because they're gonna be never evaluating you according to what you start, how you finish. Good intentions are good, but we never wrote a book about book of intentions. They wrote a book about acts. So there is no book in the Bible written book of intentions of the apostle. No, no, no. Book of acts. Some people have good ideas, good intentions, no act, no manifestation. And the world need to not to hear about God. They need to see God. There is no other people to show how God look like except us. If Elisha cannot carry double portion of Elijah, then Elijah failed. If my ministry have to die with me, then I fail. If I can't multiply, then I'm dead. I'm not a seed which gives life. This is a very profound stuff. Bible says, the first Adam, the first man created, was a living soul. Two things. He was a soul, thinker, emotional, decider. Number two, he was living, fighting to survive greatness. That was a failure of Eden. The second one who must be better than the first one, he was not a living soul. Number one, he was a spirit. Number two, he was not a living, he was a life giver. Two words different. One was a living and he was a soul. Living thinking, living emotion, he do what he feel good to do. <laughs> he does what he feel okay to do. He does what he think it's right to do. He does what he decide to do. That was being a living soul. And all the purpose was him. I'll find Omega him. God found that was a mess. He has to send another one different from the first one. And the second one, believe me, was so different. Number one, he was not a soul. In other words, he was not a thinker. He was not an emotional person. He was not just a decider person. He was a, a revelation person. He was, he was spiritual. Number two, 
he was not concerned about how he may live, but how many he may make live. Not concerned about how he may be great, but how many he may make great. Not concerned about how he may sustain himself, but how many he sustain. Not concerned about how much food he may eat, but many people he may feed. Not concerned about how he's going to clothe himself, but how many say he clothes. You see, Christianity is a shift creation. You know, we, we are in a very bad time. People are just mediocre. Believe me, this morning, if I can't share my heart, then I'm done. Then I'm finished. Because I don't know how much I have time. Let me explode, then kill me after. If you want to kill me, or oh, love me for life. Because my brother, my friends, cross the line of being in the ministry to be a minister maker. Because my friend has crossed the line to be sustain the church by his presence and personality. He crossed the line now to be more powerful, not being in the business. Powerful and seen. Powerful behind the scene. Powerful, you know, powerful. We just, I just came from Rwanda last Thursday. We went to bury one of the great bishop, Bishop Shumbusho. He was a great man, this man. And nobody saw it because he was not in the front line. His wife was the apostle. And him, he was a apostle of apostle, not called apostle. So the man was everything for him. Communicator, secretary, manager, financial, the backbone. An African man called his wife my papa. It has to be a miracle. Uh -huh. So the man was like, he could welcome him in a very staff way, honorable way. He said, Stand up, we're going to receive our papa, meaning his wife. Maybe in Canada it's easy, but on our place, <laughs> no is at all. No is. This man was a connector. I saw in one, you know, this burial service, that was every color, every tribe, even as a vice president of Nigeria, who is acting as a president now, came all the way from Abuja to Kigad just for this. This is powerful. But this man who brought all this out there, I was a preacher that day. That was last uh, Monday. So I wonder, the church is going so low because we are shifting from living, from life giver to living. We are there about gaining money, gaining houses, gaining a wife. We, it's so cheap. So cheap, so cheap, so cheap. We don't give life, we enjoy living. We are not proud of how many we empower. We are proud to be powerful. Us, this is just a shame on us. Imagine a lady a mom who eat more food than the kids. She's a killer, a mother. I mean, she's, she should be proud of feeding than eating. But not what is happening. Pastors are proud to be rich than they are believers. Meaning, it's shame on us. We should, we should be proud of saying, listen who I am. This son of man have a jet. This one has, I'm their father. That's it. I mean, I, I don't appear, show up. I, I empower people. I give life to people. I don't want, this should be that way. This is how we should be. Oh my God. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Giving 
birth is uh, risky. When a um, lady go to the hospital to deliver, she's between death and life. So we never go to deliver by singing. <laughs> no, 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 no. We go crying. You don't go deliver by saying, oh, Minenda Kuzala. You go by, oh my God, oh my God, my God. This is just we should be. And the people are, all the messages are about living. How seven step, how can be great? Ten principles to be the richest man. This is cheap. Even rob people, steal her, they can get money by any means. So if Jesus said that for money, then we are pity people. Everybody can get a car and a house. They can't be life givers. They can't be life givers. It costs Jesus to empower you to be life giver. It costs him and him alone. Him alone. I mean him alone. House. When I finished my study like a young engineer, I was dreaming for money and power. I was in a big city called Kinshasa, Daira C, Democratic People. I was a young man, black belt in karate, Shotokan style, running the city, looking after young girls, knowing how to dance rock and uh, kukudendo. Both. <laughs> Both. That was my stuff. Then, God took me for four years jobless. I wonder how can I be blessed when I'm not saved and the one saved be crushed? It was contradictory. God said, no, 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 no. He asked me one question. Do you want to be a basket or a tree? Do you get that? Do you want to be a basket? Or do you want to be tree? The difference is the basket curry fruits. The tree bur fruits. You can steal from basket. You can't you can plunder from tree. Because you take Christianity is not basket people. Christianity is three, life giver. Yes. And this stuff is everywhere. In Canada, we have selfish, concentrated messages. In Rwanda, same virus. In Nigeria, same virus. Go to Ghana, Accra, same virus. When a preacher comes to talk about getting Come get a visa to go USA. Yeah! Come get a, a husband. Yeah! Come get. Yeah! I've come to challenge you. Come die for him to raise you up. And I come die. Just come die for him to give you life. Come die. Listen, come die. You, my God. You see? See? If somebody made an out call for people to get, people are going to run. But I have a different out call today. Come die, but you're going to give life. Come lay down your life. You may not survive, but at least you'll give life. You will empower somebody. You will change the situation. That's it. That's all. I don't want to take an example, but... Uh, God help me. If a young girl don't wanna, she don't wanna get some weight, so don't give birth. <laughs> wanna keep your breast standing, don't give birth. You wanna, <laughs> you wanna keep your weight, don't. Don't, I mean, don't look the things and the opposites. You can't look the things 
and long for the opposite. You have to lose on one side and concentrate on the other one. If you want your belly to be smooth, no lying, don't give birth. Forget about kids. If you want kids, remember your, your belly will be somehow geographically <laughs> marked. So it, it's a cost. It must, it must, ha- my God, it must. So people want to give girls something, they refuse the price. Cross Point, especially Calgary, today has shifted to another level. And, and if somebody belongs to this church, reduce his coming to church and the ministry because Elijah is not there, you are foolish. Yeah. You should come even double to cover his vacuum too. If somebody told you, you know, I'm going to come back when apostle will be there. You just don't understand. You are just a stupid guy. You should even bring more people to say, it's our house. And that is in rest. It's our house. It's our house. And we have to work on it. It's our house. It's our home. And we brought, that is resting. We're going to serve. Daddy trust us. This is our time to my God, my God, my father, my. Jesus. No stranger has ever been. The hair. It costs to be the son in the house to inherit. When somebody is passing by, give him food and drink, pass by. But the son don't just serve him. He's going to wait for inheritance. The inheritance is not for passengers or travelers. The inheritance is for son. Son, not just the workers. Son, son in the house. I, I struggled years to make the church as God's one. And I made mistakes. School, church, powerful army, direct the church, I failed. But the day I understood, the church should be a family. When I started getting sons loyal in my heart, I started becoming a man. Because only son can make you not servant. This house doesn't need people who come to look at. They need sons who believe in Elijah, not just somebody who can deliver some message. A life-impacting father. Not Nadia like just a visitor established in Montreal. A mom to complete some other nurturing stuff where a pastor cannot do that. Because sometimes you women, you need some womanhood impartation. Elijah cannot give. You need specifically Nadia, sorry, to embrace you and transfer how to be mom. That's why a house which is not led by a father and mom is just a great NGO. And I don't believe NGO can last forever. And Joe will be finished when interests are done. I never, I suffered, I never ran a church as an association. It's a failure. If the church is not a family, I'm done. I'm not in. If you find somebody on my feet raised by me, even if you give him a billion, he knows his life and blessing passed by me. I am a father to him, not just an associate and a teacher, a coach, and a personal people. Cross point. Stop. If you have any other ambition, you can't go far. 
unless you understood the principle of the spiritual, connected to the father, not to the leader. Not to the coach. Not to the, not to the CEO. Because we have many CEOs, chief executive officers. I've lost some uh, hair shocking with people. I never gave them back. Jesus is coming soon and you are missing up. Everything is about gaining, elevation, powerfully. Nothing to die in order to give life. Everything is just a selfish, motivated message. The good preacher is the one who can call people, come for your miracle. No, 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 no. Come for your transformation. And, and a miracle will follow. Tell me, do you think Elijah was a special man or is a special man? Elijah, I mean Diallo. No, at all. He said it. His character, his brokenness, his faithfulness, his heart, it pays time. People can see 12 years, but this is just the flourishing. The reality is more years back down there, like digging for a foundation. That was the heart before the manifestation. The bike, good. Motorbike, it makes him excited. He even danced more than Amadou. <laughs> I mean, I mean, so shocked. You are, I agree with you, mom. I agree with you. He jumped like this. Whoa, 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 whoa. My friend is done. But believe me, that cannot hold him. Because the digging inside is well done. That one he can just enjoy and play. But he can't really stay in because the preparation is too higher just to enjoy a bike and sleep on that. That's why many people cannot be blessed because their hearts are not ready. Some blessings may kill even some people. They are not ready. Thank God for yesterday's celebration. Thank God for your gift. But thank God for God's transformation in him. So that he may thank God for that. He may not betray you with years. Otherwise, no preparation, no future. You know why God took his own son, who was zero fault. He took him for 30 years preparation. Use him just for three. I mean, the time of ministry was tithe. The time he used him was 110 or the time he was prepared, God himself prepared his son, who was God, still need of preparation. The Bible says he learned obedience about what he suffered. He learned school of obedience. He was God, still going to school. The school of obedience for 30 years, 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 20, 30. No ministry, no public demonstration, just preparation. And you who want to be prepared for three years, rush quickly for serving, struggling, and suffer for 30. People ask me, Masasu, why are you the same? We know in 1982, speaking for authority, shouting, same, same sharpness, I feel used. We thought maybe you were a young man that time. No marriage, no car, no house, no faith. No fame. They never knew. When he closed doors, he prepared me. He digged me. I mean, he made sure my heart is out of stuff. 
He made sure I have no ambition except him. He made sure even he made me cleaner. I will rejoice knowing he is there. He made sure I will never betray him. Then, then he can release stuff. I'll be coming here sometimes with my jet just to visit you. <laughs> and believe me, I'll be speaking this way. You know why? Because no stuff can hold me. Why? He took his time to make my heart, not my brain. To prepare me like that. And then he can release me without fear for being betrayed. Listen, why am I Apostle friend? Not because he's black. <laughs> Not because he looks like Rwandan. Or married to Burundi and close by. It's because he believes in righteousness as I believe. It's because he believes in character before charisma, as I believe. It's because, I mean, I give you a reason. It's because he believes in marriage, as I believe. He believes in Christ being the center, the absolute dream, as I believe. So when you say common interest, you connect. That's it. That's it. Choose your friend. If any relationship cannot make you advance the kingdom, leave it. Yeah. Why should you? We, we are rushing after time. We have no time to lose. We are rushing after time. No time to lose. No time to waste. If a friend of yours is just on stuff, things, selfish, jealous, this little, little, no sense. Leave him quickly because he will, he will, he will consume your time. You will never get it back. I choose my friend. If you are not somebody who push me in the kingdom, I don't hate you, but I keep you in this. Because I can't put my energy, all strength in no sense. Why can I travel all the way from Rwanda, Entebbe, Uganda, Amsterdam, Minneapolis? Then Calgary, 24 hours traveling, plus jet lag and, and coming sleepy. Leaving my church and churches broken with flu. Just you mean I have nothing to do. I'm a very busy man. But this man is a very important soul in my life too. That's why you choose the most important than the less one. Simple. 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 The church must be awakened. Everywhere. Not only Calgary. Everywhere. People are just, I mean, people are playing game. Somebody was telling me, you know what? This young man has anointing. He has something godly, but he has some weakness. He's a fornicator. How can he? <laughs> he, he called that some weakness. <laughs> he, he said, this young man is powerful. God's instrument. He is so anointed. He is something godly. But, but uh, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of weakness. He does not conquer sin, weakness. He loves women. He sleeps with women in the church. The same Holy Spirit qualifying you for miracle is he in, incapable to, to transform your heart so that you can give life, not death. This is just a shame on us. And people run after such foolish people. Rubbish. Time is up. Righteousness or death. I say, time is up. Righteousness or what? Or death. Time is up. Peace.
impurity or die. Time is up for standing godly, not good. Not nice people. Godly people. Thank you, my visitor. Let me rush, just give you something I'm going to keep before we close. No, now, but something. Possessing the heart of Christ. That we're going to share this morning. Scriptures. Possessing. Yeah. That's Proverbs 4 23. Above all else, do what? God what? God your heart. For everything you do, <laughs> everything you're going to become, everything you're going to possess flows, not from anywhere, specifically from your heart. So if Trump can have some bodyguards, the heart must be more both gods than Trump. Because it must be well under God, protection properly because of how important it is. Number two. Second scripture. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in what? In humility, Value others above yourself. Very testing, very tough. In humility, consider your brother above yourself. Humbly like this, okay? This man is blessed than I do. So this man, his grace I don't have. So in this area, I value him than me. One day I told Apostle Elijah, pray over me. I need nations. Though I'm a Peter, not Paul, but I feel like uh, uh, I'm going to add Paul calling above Peter. He said, no, 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 I don't want to pray over you. Just pray. I said, don't worry. I know how to value something different from what I have. That's humility. Humility never killed anyone, but proud kills many. Nobody died from humility. Nobody. Nobody died from humility. But pride? Nebuchadnezzar went for seven years eating pride. Herod stood like this, speaking out of proud. He died and the womb came from him just the second because they cried to him, Oh, voice of a God, all oh, the voice of a man. Out. We, we, we. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Next. In your relationship, which one with one another has the same mindset as Jesus Christ? You know, this word mindset is translated by him the same heart, the same feeling, the same emotion, the same view. Not just when it become possess this heart, when to relate to somebody. Next. Who being in a very, they are explaining, nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Didn't run for that. Next. Rather, he made himself nothing. You know the scripture. By taking the very nature of the servant, of the land servant. Being made in human likeness, what was very humbling. Next. As being found in appearance as a man, remember, he was not a man. He was a creator, becoming a creature. This is just coming down too much. And then he humbled himself by becoming obedient, and the line obedient to death. Even death, that is some executive death. You sleep properly in a huge hotel, Morning, you are done. But this death was not such an executive death. Or you, you die in a mansion. He died on tree. That was not very 
executive. To death, even death on a cross, which was for robbers and the killers. Therefore, therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. Man, thy the name of Jesus. Every knee, every knee, every knee in heaven and on earth, and even under the fish will bow their knees. Gods and cows, they are bow their knees. Raven and heaven will bow their knees. Eagles, every birds, eagles. Gods and the sheep, even fish. Demons underground, men on the ground, angels in heaven, every creature just down. Listen, even if you don't bow down now, willingly, you will bow down later. You better bow down ahead of time. For now, you can do it smartly. That time is going to be not smartly. Taken from here, just down by force. For now, you come down yourself. That time, you're going to be taken down. Next. Next scripture, please. Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good what? I pray so that Elijah can go for three months, recover good health. And that all may go well with you, even as the word is meaning, the health will be determined by the state of the soul. And he continued, all, and that all may go well. Another version says, you may prosper. On a major of your soul is getting along well. In other words, your prosperity, your health, depend on the major of your heart or state of your heart. Now, let's go to some point to fix some ideas. Point number one. In life, things do not have the same value. Is this true or no? Everything is not the same value. For example, having a shelter is one thing. Having a house equipped properly is important. But having a garden cut in a way or in another is optional. That makes sense? Having a shelter, a good house structured, you can sleep on a floor. Having a good house well equipped is important. But having a shelter built is absolute. Now, having a clean garden, small or large, it's optional. You can live without a garden. Okay. Having a car is something with engine. Having a good car, no engine. So having some good color of the car is optional. Some may prefer the yellow. It's optional. Sometimes, believers took some absolute stuff, they put it in optional. Some put important thing. I mean, getting saved is absolute. Being baptized is important. But going to saloon for doing this or that is optional. <laughs> Am I clear on that? Yeah. Having Christ with you is Absolute. Being baptized and discipled and having a church is very important. Now, praying close eyes or open eyes, praying with music or no music. You know, we were shocked yesterday, uh, the day before on Friday. Your culture here, when you pump for prayer, they put you some. Puku, 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 puku. For us, if you do that in Kigali, you stop people praying. They need to do it dry. No music is, it must be. 
like barbecue, no water, just sick, dry. If you put the music, they'll be distracted. You see, I told the young man who was on a keyboard, please politely move from that. I know some preachers like it. When you are preaching, they are bagger of music. Me, if you do that, you disturb me. Leave it alone. Let me shoot properly. Shoot properly. No. That's optional. My friend Elijah likes music. When he pray with music, you can see the anointing going on. We can see him marching. But me, music, I feel like you're putting some water in my real drink. So leave, leave it alone. Three things. Absolute thing or absolute or absolute for, or fundamental or crucial. That's top. Important things and then optional things. If I go to preach in a hospital, somebody dying, I can't preach baptism. I can't. I preach him Christ within him because it's absolute need that time. If he survived two days, I teach him baptism. So we can learn how to priority, put priorities because we are missing up. Having a position to serve properly is important. But serving as a believer is absolute. So being ordained in a title is optional. Today or tomorrow. They may ordain you as a pastor tomorrow. You feel prophetically. And then a pastor will come by and say, you know what? This pastor of us, we adorn him like a pastor. We feel like the apostolic, the prophetic anointing is coming in. This is just so you can see. The church must shift to a higher level of being smart in a way to staff. Don't put optional things absolute. Don't put important things in a place of absolute stuff. Put things in stuff. Being an apostle, if it can allow me to do apostolic good, it's important. But being a friend of Christ, being connected to Christ, that one, it's absolute. So you may cast me out of apostolic office. I'm still enjoying. I can't negotiate that. Living in Rwanda is important for my mission as a Peter going to Jew. But it's not absolute for Christ. If he took me in China and he said, I've changed your mandate, I will bow down. Him is more absolute than important. Now, possessing Christ's heart, not just having Christ in our heart, different, is so crucial for us who are called Christian, meaning called to resemble to Christ. This topic is not just optional. You get it or you die. Next. Number two, the heart is the engine of our life, true or not. It determines everything we are and everything we will be, everything we possess now, and everything we're going to possess later. The size of our heart will determine your life, style, and the level of your life. Not that only. You cannot reach beyond what? Your heart. Therefore, gain the right heart, pure heart, Christ's heart, and keep it. You know, yesterday when Apostle was sharing his grandma wisdom, he said, my grandma told me, you are thinny, no muscles, but you are strong. Because of your heart. The strength never depends on how huge you are and imposing you are. How your heart can contain. 
If your heart can contain a Vietnamese face to a Nigeria, then it's large. Right? Do you get me? If your heart can manage a Spanish guy traveling stuff from the birth, a side with a Burundian guy very calculating, looking like this, then your heart is extra large. If your heart can contain Rwandan people, every, every, every tribe is its own trouble. Every culture is its own demons. So if your heart can contain every tribe, Sudanese, Sudanese verse, verse. Let, let it go. Let it go. Now, I wish you can possess such a heart. I wish. I wish. When I got saved, people laughed on me. They call me, this man is a rich man in heaven. In other words, he's a poor he. <laughs> because they saw me in a very difficult, no money, one cloth. They said, this guy is so spiritual. He's very rich there. Poor he. And then the day I was to ask for my fiance hand. One of their cousins said, just a poor preacher? Poor preacher to be our brother-in-law? Poor preacher? <laughs> and their family, their tribe made a gathering of 100 people to discuss all my case. <laughs> all the case. Yeah, that's a true story. And then everybody was who is this guy who come to fiance or to look for our daughter? Is he doing something great? And the people could answer, no, just a poor preacher. Poor preacher. That's poor preacher. Today I'm the husband. So don't, don't, don't play. Don't miss up. Don't miss up. I'm, I'm executive. Executive husband. I'm, don't play game. Don't miss. Why? No matter how you may be poor now, yes. tomorrow things can change. God can raise you up. He's able to raise somebody up. He's ready to change your situation. He's ready to raise you up. Praise Jesus. He's powerful to make it. Hallelujah. When the heart is well prepared, the staff can follow. But when the staff are there, with a broken heart, it's not evident that the heart will be prepared later. It can even become worse. So you better allow God to prepare your heart. Then stuff to come your way without any disturbance. I can live everywhere in the world now. I can live in Japan and properly relate to Japan people because my heart is no longer Rwandan. I can minister. I went to West Kaganish. It's, it's far from Montreal, 3,000 kilometers where the, the primitive people live. There, there is no network there. And in summertime, it's mine too. That way I went in 2005. I went to there. I went for the shopping no, my, no size of mine. Because even the baby of eight years, he was more than me. So I, I went there and I ate raw fish. And I was like, oh my God, in Jesus' name. I was like, oh my God. Oh. Ah, I, this is a missionary challenge. Let me eat that. I ate fish, rough, not prepared. And I was like, oh my God, what am I doing here? I was only black on the middle of, it's like one spot on a color. <laughs> no, it was like, that was 2005. We drove almost two days from Montreal up to that place. 
Wama nitu weskaga ni safade. You know what I discover? The heart are the same. Same challenge, same sin. Like raven are black, white, wherever. That's the way with people. Same devote, same appetite, same lusts, same pride of life. Same, same. No matter which color of the skin, the heart are the same. Same rebellious. Same appetite, same ambitions. Same. And then they look like different by outside. Go inside. The size of your heart will determine your life style and the level of your life. You can't reach beyond your heart. Therefore, gain the right heart, the pure heart, Christ's heart, and keep it. Pay the price. Does it cost you to fast? Fast. Cost you to read the Bible? Read it. Cost you to pray every night? Overnight? Do it. Whatever price to pay, pay it. But keep it. Keep your heart. Do you have to be in 172 keepers? Go in. Front line? Go in. Every unit of prayer, make sure you fight for your heart. Because if you lose it, even if you are a good believer and a good giver, you're going to die standing. Number three is I finish steps to do. Are you tired? Apostle, am I okay? Will time? Are you sure? Can I? Number three, and then uh, if God allow me, we'll be done. <laughs> we have a friend of mine. He, he lives in Kabale. Now, we used to invite, we lived to, to invite a lady, you know her, Holloway, uh, Apostle Holloway from Washington. She always, Bishop, she always say, two more minutes. Yeah, yeah. Two more minutes, and then she didn't finish. Two more minutes become one hour. Two minutes become, so two more minutes, and then she's still going on. <laughs> Number one, repent from your natural sinful heart and make sure Christ is enthroned in your heart. Somebody asked me, why do you often start by this point of repentance? You are speaking to believers. You should assume they are born again. No, 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 no. You are not. Not all of you. I have seen bishops, believe me, unbeliever. He is bishop, knowing some Greek and some Roman, speaking well, but no revolution there. This repenting stuff is missing in the church. People are coming salvation this way. Uh, repeat after me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. It's just like a joke. You can't go to deliver by singing or playing game. You go suffering. Repentance is almost dying. And then we have many believers who sit in front of us. Just good people, nice people. They answer to out call nicely. Come on, come on. You need Jesus. Yeah, here I am. Repeat after me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I receive you. Save you and then nothing happened, nothing because nothing. And then he, he grown up in the Bible study, but now roots. How can you build the house? No foundation. And then tomorrow you're gonna betray Jesus. So you think he's a believer? He has never been a believer, he was an attender, he was not converted, he was convinced. And then the higher conviction is gonna come, he will change. There's a difference between being converted and being convinced. When you are convinced, the first good speaker will convince you in another direction. When you are converted, it's like butterfly coming from the womb. You can't change. I don't believe in people who backslide. It's that this word doesn't exist in the Bible. We are all saved, new currency, or not saved. If they call back slide Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, check your salvation. Because if I say 
let's convert this dollar US in Canadian currency. You can have both Canada, America. It must be one. It must be one currency. Either dollar US or Canada. Converting means changing completely from one. Why this is happening in church? No repentance. They never cried on themselves. They just like being convinced. They come like this. But when you really deeply know it's one no return ticket. You go once for all. Number two. Separate properly and forever from everything which gives the devil or the, this world any legal right over your life. The first church, if somebody gets saved, you're going to burn something. If you're married to the wrong person, you divorce or you leave quickly. The first church was powerful because people like Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus he said, as I'm saved now, listen, my money I give half for poor people. Four times for whoever I cheated for. Today, you get saved and keep all the books of occultism. You, you get saved and keep the, somebody's stuff in your room. No change, no restitution, nothing is burnt, and you think going to change. Impossible. You get saved and still reading some books from this stuff of free thinking. Free thinking. Open mind transformation. New age pushing. You just... When I get saved, I had like this box of this, this player music game or disc 45, speed 633, like this. Of all the singers in the world, this star, Bo Marley, Jimmy Cliff, Peter Tosh, and all the Saturday Night Fever, and all the stuff of this. That was back 80. I took that publicly, I burned them. People crying like, what happened to you? You have to burn something. Let me close by this last point. Yesterday, Pastor Jabati said, I'm defined by prayer. It's half. The reality, I'm defined by consecration. Because prayer is just one of the signs. Consecration is me. If they kill me, they kill consecration. If, if, if I can't speak consecration or dedication, then no ministry for me. That's a key for me. And that's what is missing nowadays. And I learned that from the world. Because they are dedicated to all they are doing. I give you a joke. One of the person who is a cousin to my father, he gave his toe, his fingers or toe, one to be cut here and the other to be cut this side. Ask me why. Because that time he was a girl who won fashion. And then the style of that time was a very small, Shoes very fair on a bit like that. So his foot was like this. So he has to cut, they cut him. This is paying the price of. One day my mom told me, he said, Masasu, one thing you do, I don't agree. You exaggerate loving Jesus. You should put some water on the wine. He said, Jesus on the morning, 
Jesus, Sunday evening, your fasting used to be a very good sportsman, strong. Now you are just like this. <laughs> like singing by force. She said, I wish you could die at your birth because you are useless, nothing. And I do believe if you reduce your consecration to Jesus, you're going to be a good man. Well, I said, Mom, I can't reduce my consecration. You know, in Swahili, the word consecration or dedication is translated this way. Kujiwe kawaf. Giving yourself as dead. That's, that, that's the word. In Swahili, when you say somebody's consecrated or dedicated, means simply consider yourself like dead body. It means a lot. If you don't throw yourself a dead body, you will spend years singing well, praying well, reading well the Bible. You can't change anything around you. Believe me. This man to mark Calgary and Canada, it cost him to die somehow. To his ambition, he could be a good seller. He could be a good I mean, engineer, doing PhDs, teaching somewhere, gaining money, consultation, making stuff. He died to some ambitions. And he died every day for Amadou. And other challenges. Now, by his death, you live. I mean, people want to change stuff without paying the price. Believe me, Masasu, when God spoke to me, stand up, Masasu, go back to Rwanda. That time I was in Congo, and believe me, I was getting this very last Sunday before I travel back to Rwanda after genocide, 94 July. In a basket like this, they put some diamond for me. Offering basket, getting some diamond, precious stone. And then the devil told me, you don't have to go to Rwanda. Starting from rubbish. Stay here in Congo. Gain money. Be a good reverend. Enjoy life. I, I obeyed and I go to Rwanda. I went there. at the cost of my life. Today when they saw ministry, they don't know the price I paid. So believe me, my brother, the church doesn't need living people. They need some dead people to give life. Montreal will never change unless Nadia laid down her life. And the team who came, it's good to be introduced here. It's another thing to pay the price of shaking one of the worst cities demonically in Canada, Montreal. If you go Montreal just like uh, walking around like this, you will sing and you will stay five people and they're going to be your fan. Hello, Pastor, we love you. That's it. That's it. Don't look for far. Look for sons. Yeah. So in order to give sons. They put me in jail for five days in Rwanda. I was in jail. Because I went to preach to the college. Put to jail. Every day I was dying. On a road, I could risk my life. My wife could pray over me. Honey, you want to go to preach there? Yes, honey, I have no choice. I could feel the tears coming on my head. Not because she so spiritual, but the fear to be a widow too was in. <laughs> See, she pays the price. She dies staying home, and I'm, I'm dying going to ministry. Consecration is, I wish you are going to give me a whole year to speak about it in this church. Amen. It's missing. Amen. And especially you in the western part, I speak for those who came from Africa. There, you learn many things by faith. Treatment by faith. Clothing by faith. Marriage by faith. Transportation by faith. Yeah. When you come me, everything is assurance. There. Your food paid for before. Before you give birth to the kids, you have to make sure the bank account is all okay. For you to conceive a kid, you have to calculate some money is in a bank account. Therefore, we can make a kid. 
Okay, <laughs> money before kids come. We came many, no money. And then we lived. When you came in here, you were shouting, crying. You know what people said? Just cool down. <laughs> cool down. The winter will cool you down. <laughs> My God. Consecration is consecration. Amen. It make you sit down. It make you dying. It kills ambition in you. It reminds you where you come from. You become humble by force sometimes. Humble. I mean, you, consecration is like I lay down. I have no dream. No ambition. No advancement. I'm ready for anything. Consecration. Apostle. Please, let's stand up on our feet. Everybody, put your hand together for God and the man of God for this powerful word.